We're going to use the results that we had from the last video um, to find the modulus and the argument for each of the following. Now the thing to be careful of here is whether the argument is big A argument or little a, little arg. Um, in this case you can see you've got the big A here, so it's a capital A. So that means we're dealing with big arg of Z. So as soon as I see that I always just write down just to remind myself that theta has to be in between two particular values, in between negative pi and pi, including pi. And what that looks like as a picture is that you're allowed to go around this way and have positive angles up to pi. And then if you're going to any angles on this side, you can go that way, but they have to be negative angles up to, but not including negative pi. You can't include negative pi. So anything that's actually on the axis here is going to be pi, okay, as an angle. So the other thing we need to do is find the modulus, and it's a good idea to write down your formulas so that you know what you're doing. Um, mod z equals the square root of a squared plus b squared for a complex number of the form, the standard form a plus bi. Okay, so you've got a couple of formulas there that you're going to be using. So let's start with a. So we'll look at i. The first one we're looking at is z equals 4. And if we think about that on a graph, z equals 4 is a purely real number. It's 4 across. So the first thing that we know is that the modulus or absolute value of z, which I'm actually going to call r, um, in this example, you can call it mod z if you want, I'm just going to use r, um, is 4 because that's the distance from the origin. So that's nice and easy. The arg, capital A arg of z, is also nice and easy because we always measure from this point here going around and because we're sitting on the horizontal axis, there's actually no angle there, 0. Okay, well there is an angle but it's 0, zero degrees or 0 radians. So that's that one. The next one too is z equals negative 2i and that's a completely imaginary number so that would be 2 down. Now you can see here first of all that your uh, modulus r or mod z is going to be 2 because you've got that distance of 2 from the origin. Now for r z we have to think about where we are here. You can see that you've got an angle to get to this point here of 90 degrees or pi on 2 but because we're at the underside here of the horizontal, we're going to have to use a negative. Okay, so we have to go backwards, negative pi on two. So that's our big arg z for this one. Okay, for the third one, we've got z equals one plus i. Here we, you could do a little bit more work, but again, if you draw it, you'll see you've got equal distances here and here to your complex number, which tells you that this is going to be a 45 degree angle. And remember that a 45 degree angle is pi on 4. Okay, For the length here, you can imagine that you've effectively got a triangle of length 1, height 1, and you're interested in what this length is here. So we're going to use our formula from over here to find our um, modulus for z. So we're going to take the imaginary and real parts, both of them are 1. So we've got um, the modulus of z equals the square root of 1 squared, plus the coefficient of i, which is 1 squared, and that's root 2. So our modulus of z is root 2. Okay. The last one, 4, we've got z equals 4 minus 3i. Now we'll have to do something here for this. And to find our theta, another really key formula, theta equals inverse tan of the imaginary part of z over the real part of z. So we're going to use that to find theta, and we'll also uh, use our formula here for our modulus of z. So first thing I might do is I'll find I'll find what r is, find what uh, mod z is. So the square root of each of the parts squared, 4 squared, plus, now you don't include the i here, but you do include the negative to show that you do understand you're, you're squaring all of that imaginary component. Um, so you're going to have 4 squared is 16, plus 9, which is square root of 25, which gives you a nice answer of 5 for r. For the theta, we know that theta equals the inverse tan of the imaginary part, which is negative 3, over the real part, which is 4. Now, with something like this that's non-standard, okay, what you'd need to do is you'd need to use your calculator, and if you put that into your calculator, you should find that you get negative 0 0.64 radians. Remember the little symbol for radians is a c? Okay, or you can actually write the word radians. All right. 
So that's your theta. Now what you need to be careful of here is that you're um, in the right region. Okay. Now the way that you can tell this is all the way around here would be negative pi radians. It would be negative 3.14. So because this is smaller than 3.14, it's smaller than pi, that means that our arg of z, actually we can just use this straight up. So it's in the correct um, form. Okay. So that's our moduluses and our arguments for those those first four. Okay. You could try the rest of them now. Pause the video, try the rest, um, and I'll go through them next. Okay, so finding the argument here, this is little a, little arg, so we don't have to have um, the particular interval between negative pi and pi. So we've got z equals negative 1 minus i. Okay, first thing I always do is just a quick sketch, okay, it's just so I can see where I am. And often a quick sketch can help you figure out things very quickly as well. So I know that this is an angle here of pi on 4 because of the equal distances 1 and 1. So because I know that, I can actually write down that my arg of z would be equal to pi plus that pi on 4. So that's going to be 5 pi on 4. If you were interested in arg, I know it's not in the question here, but if you were interested in arg, big A arg, what would it be? And you'd be going around this other way to negative 3 pi on 4 going backwards. Okay, so that's the difference between little arg and big arg. Um, for the modulus of z, and on this page I'll write it as modulus of z, so you get used to seeing it both ways. Um, again, we know, we did this one before, but squaring both the imaginary and real parts, you'd have the square root of 1 plus 1, which is the square root of 2. So that's your um, argument there, and the modulus. For c, that was for b, label that b. For c, we're expressing z equals negative root 3 plus i in r, oops, in r cis theta form. Okay, and what that means, remember, is that we're looking at um, r z equals r cosine theta plus sine theta, and often we write that as i sine theta. Okay, so we're going to be looking at it in that form. So we need two things, we need theta and we need r. Um, you can see here that it's actually wanting theta to be big arg as well. So we make sure that we find the big arg. So we're going to find big arg of z, which is theta, which is the inverse tan of the imaginary part, which is 1, over the real part, which is root 3. In this case, it's a negative as well. And again, I just draw myself a quick picture just on the side. I know it's i and minus root 3, so it's over here. So I know that my tan will be a negative, okay, negative tan. Um, to simplify this a bit, this is going to be root 3 on 3. Now from the standard triangles that you have for tan, to get root 3 on the top, the only way that you're going to do that is to have this as your opposite, opposite over adjacent. So that means it's a multiple of pi on 3. We have to think about what multiple. To be over here, it's going to have to be 2 pi on 3, because that would be pi on 3 and then another pi on 3, so 2 pi on 3. Okay, so that's our big A arg, okay, for this one. The other thing that we need is r, and r is the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. Root 3 squared, it's a negative, that becomes positive. Root 3 squared becomes 3. 1 squared is 1, okay, so we have square root of 4, which is 2. So therefore, z equals negative root 3 plus i in cis form, cis theta form, is z equals r, which is 2. And we write this as two ways. The first way I'll show you is actually writing it, excuse me, with the long hand here, so with the angle, which is 2 pi on 3, plus i sine 2 pi on 3. The shorthand way of doing this is to write it with the um, abbreviated notation. So instead of writing the cos i sine, because it's the same angle in there, we abbreviate it to cis. And remember that the cis is the c, the i, and the s. That's where the cis comes from. So 
we can write it as 2 cis the angle, which is pi on 3. So that's z in polar form or in cis form. On d here, we're actually going to go backwards. So rather than turning something in Cartesian form into cis form or polar form, we're going to work um, the other way. So we've currently got a complex number in cis form. Okay. So what we have to do is actually work backwards and figure out um, what this would look like. Now it actually is much easier going this way than the other way, to be honest. And the reason for that is I'm going to write this out in longhand now. Remember that cis stands for cos of the angle plus i times sine of the angle. Okay, that's what z is. All right, so all you've done is I've just expressed this and actually, you know, it's probably a good idea really with this just to keep track of um, what you're working with. Use big brackets, you know, around all of this so you can see all of that is has to be multiplied by 2. So you've just expanded cis as cos i sine, that's what cis stands for. And now we have to just think about the various um, aspects here. So I, I often just draw myself where the angle would be. Negative 3 pi on 4 would be over here. So I can see that for cosine, the cosine is going to be negative and the sine is also going to be negative. So I just have to think, okay, pi on 4, well, that's going to be that root 2 on 2. Remember from that um, from our standard triangle, I'll just do it up here. If you've got the 45 degree triangle, pi on 4, it's that root 2 on 2 triangle. <clears throat> so we know this is going to be cos of negative 3 pi on 4 is root 2 on 2, and it's negative because it's in this third quadrant. And for sine, we're going to have plus i, and sine of negative 3 pi on 4 this way is going to be negative root 2 on 2 as well. So what we're going to do now is multiply the 2 through everywhere, and what you'll find is you're going to have negative 2 root 2 over 2, it's going to cancel. So you can straight up, if you want, um, just do the cancellation. This will be um, 2 root 2 over 2i. I'm just putting the i second. And you can see the cancelling. So you've got your final answer, which is negative root 2 minus root 2i. And you probably want to simplify that or factorise it, I should say, so that you have z equals, take out the negative root 2, you know, so that it's nice and pretty. And you've got 1 plus i left inside um, inside the bracket. So what you've done there is you've gone from the cis form and you're using, remember to use that important um, form, which is that when z is r cis theta, this is exactly the same, it can go either way to be z of r cos of theta plus i sine of theta. That's the key step here, so that you're using that to then find, given the angle, find out what the cos and sine components are equal to, and then you can find what z is.